Very pleased to be joined by the Jim Phelan National Coach of the Year, Steve Peichel of Rutgers, who is at his home in New Jersey. Coach, we'll get to the award in just a moment. But first of all, I know you're in kind of a coronavirus hotspot there in the tri-state area in New York and New Jersey and Connecticut. Give us a sense of what things are like around you. You know, it's just, you know, it's kind of spooky, actually. There's nobody out on the roads, um, which is a good thing. I guess everyone is listening to the advice that the governor and, uh, you know, all the people here in New Jersey are telling us. Um, home here with my family. Um, you know, this is a big week. They've been promoting to stay off the roads and stay out of the office. And we've all been smart about it. Hopefully we can get through uh you know, the tough time by listening and doing the things that all well, the people that know a lot more than we do about this virus are telling us. So uh, uh, it's been quite crazy, though. I miss my team. You know, I miss the university. I miss uh, the interaction with everybody. And uh, uh, But we'll, we'll get through this. I want to back you up a little bit to the Big Ten tournament. It was a strange feeling. I mean, we started by doing a pregame show. We had Coach Beeline and Coach Miles and Jess Settles out there on the set. You guys were on the court warming up in Indianapolis. At what point did you become aware that the game would not be played? You know, um, pro probably around, you know, 15 minutes left on the clock. So not too much before you guys found out. Uh, I was wondering, you know, the night before the games went off, I knew there were going to be no fans, you know, at the games. But we were preparing as usual. Our guys were excited about playing. And then, you know, we were in our normal game routine. And uh, Pat Hobbs, our athletic director, came in and just said, hey, this isn't going to happen. And we quickly after that took our teams off the court and got them in the locker room kind of to break the, uh, you know, difficult news to them. How did the team react? You know, as you can imagine, like very disappointed. I, I will tell you, we had our great week of practice. And, I mean, I felt really – you know, confident going into the tournament and into the next one, into the NCAA tournament. We were playing at like a, a really good level and, you know, just disappointing, especially, you know, for the seniors that you have and, and all the guys. When when you earn a season like this or earn chances to play in, in postseason in the, in the Big Ten tournament and the NCAA tournament, you really want them to enjoy that experience. But uh, we only knew at that time that the Big Ten tournament was, was canceled. I, I still honestly believe that they were going to play the NCAA tournament with, with no fans. Um, so I kind of told that to our guys. So as disappointing as that moment was for them not to play in the Big Ten tournament, I said, listen, we got another tournament, you know, around the corner that we got to prepare for. And uh, obviously, you know, a few hours later, that turned out to not be true, too. Yeah, I would say that had to be the most devastating news, just given the story with your team and, the fact that you're going to end your drought and be in the tournament for the first time since 1991. I don't think there was any doubt that you guys were going to make it. So what was that moment like with your I mean, guys when you realized that this dream, which you had done absolutely everything right to get to that point, you weren't going to be able to realize? Well, uh, you know, when, when the plane, you know, uh, started to descend from, from our trip to Indianapolis into New Jersey, um, you know, the players were on their phones immediately, as you can imagine. And uh, they actually had the news before I even knew it. Um, I went to our sports information director, Kevin Lorenz, who does a you know, great job. And I said, Kevin, yeah. you know, is this true or is this, you know, just more rumors on the Internet? And uh, he pulled up the NCA website. And that's when we found out, you know, officially that the NCA tournament had been, you know, canceled. So. It was really kind of a just just a bizarre day the whole the whole day and, and a lot of my players didn't come back with us on the plane too. Some of them went with their families, uh, you know. So the whole team wasn't on the plane. Um, they found out before I found out. You know, just a really tough way to end a, a great year. Um, you know, just disappointed for the guys. Quite honestly, you, you know, they they earned the chance to create memories in the NCAA tournament and you know. I would tell them all the time I was fortunate enough to coach in it and to play in it as a player. Like those memories that you get from that experience can't be replicated. They really can't be. Um, but, you know, there's bigger things that we're dealing with in life, you know, and I say to them all the time, it's an obstacle. You know, it's another obstacle you got to get through. Your journey is always different. The journey of every season, the journey every player has. 
it's hopefully is you know part of their journey that will make them stronger and make them appreciate the time that they have playing on a team and those kind of things maybe make them make them stronger I mentioned you won the Jim Phelan Award. Does that come with a bow tie? How does that work? <laughs> well, I don't really know. I, I do know uh, when you get awards like that, it's it's because your guys on your team decided to have a special season, and you know you have a great staff, and, and I'm blessed, you know, to, to have that. And you know, Brandon Knight is as good a coach as there is in the country. Carl Hobbs has been, you know, the Atlantic 10 coach of the year uh, and his head coaching experience, Steve Hain, Shoes Vitrone, Ben Asher, you know, the guys on my staff do a great job. So you only get those awards because your team decides they want to have a special year and sacrifice to do that. And then you have a great staff. So um, no bow tie, but uh, you know, if I could win as many games as him, I would, I better start thinking about the old bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a, a tremendous honor and congratulations to you. Coach, any final messages to Rutgers fans before we let you go? Well, I mean, I never really got to thank them for, you know, what they did. I mean, a lot of people actually traveled out to Indianapolis, too. You know, we're going to be part of uh, cheering us on and supporting us there. And I know a lot of them were traveling to wherever we got picked or whatever venue we were playing at. But they had a great year. And uh, they did all the things to make our place one of the toughest places to play. And the support – um, it's tremendous. And our guys play better, you know, when, when the fans are out and doing a great job. So just very thankful and hope to continue uh, being their coach for a long time and hope to continue uh, building this program to one that people in New Jersey and people at Rutgers University can be proud of. Well, Steve Peichel, congratulations on a great year and thanks for spending a few minutes with us here. I appreciate you having me on. Stay uh, safe and stay healthy.